I'm director Caden Butera, and today we're going to be talking about how we made our short film, Recursion. A hard sci-fi is something I've wanted to try for a really long time now. They're some of my favorite movies to watch, so I couldn't wait any longer to get started on this project. I wanted to incorporate as many of the science fiction elements as I could while maintaining a shoestring budget, so that forced us to pull from DIY techniques and local resources around us. Starting off, the Spaceship Bridge. Going back to some of my favorite sci-fi films as a reference, you'll notice the design leans very heavily on the industrial look, specifically lots of pipes, smoke, dark metal, and so on. Fortunately, I knew someone who had a location that might fit that bill. What are we doing today, Joe? We're gonna go to, I don't, I don't even know where this is, the sawmill. North of here. Together, my friend slash arts director, Joe, and I went out to the location and scouted the sawmill, about an hour away from me in Old Town, Idaho. Right off the bat, we knew we could make this place work. With the huge rustic boilers, with the metal grate flooring, my vision was starting to become a reality. This was, at one point, an actual functioning sawmill, but has since been left to deteriorate. There was some graffiti on the wall. There was an actual rib cage on the floor waiting for us. That was scary. After snooping around there for far too long, Joe and I agreed that not only would we be using this location as our bridge set, but also the abandoned corporal building set later on in the script as well. It was just too good of a location not to show off every nook and cranny of this creepy rustic place. We got a few problems to work around. Number one, there's no power. Because there's no power, we had to rely exclusively on battery powered lights. To dress the set and make it look a little more interesting, we took a bunch of battery-powered LEDs from Home Depot and put them in the background. So another thing is there's a lot of holes in the wall and a lot of moments where the sun is coming out. So we'll either have to shoot it at night or cover every single hole in the wall. There were lots of random windows and random holes in the walls giving us a lot of light leakage. So our first task was to black those out. To dress the bridge set even further, we went out to a junkyard and acquired a bunch of random scrap metal. Switches, metal knobs, things that we could dress in the background that could further disguise the sawmill. For the captain's chairs, it was a mixture of some thrift store gamer chairs and some disassembled office chairs we got from Goodwill. I really wanted to go with a more dark, low-key look to the ship rather than a bright and shiny atmosphere. I worked with my amazing director of photography, Deshaun Bedford, and we went to work making that happen. Now, how we made the spacesuits. For starters, I got two full-body painter suits and spray-painted them a tannish brown. I realized I kept missing a bunch of spots when I spray painted on the ground, so that led me putting on the suit and have Joe spray paint me. We need to cook. After that, we went to the thrift store and got an old football helmet and an old motorcycle helmet and spray painted those as well. We're gonna want to remove the inside padding because it's so small Wait, in there. I look like Speed Racer. <laughs> See, I decided instead of just going to black, I went with brown just to give it a little more of the 70s feel. We got some random vacuum tubing and fastened it to the helmets and attached a clear welding mask to the front. Joe then proceeded to purchase some cheap yellow wine bottle lights and put them on the inside of the helmet so there was a light source shining on the actors' faces. We added some miscellaneous biking pads and random straps to the suits and that was pretty much it. 
It went through a variety of stages, but we eventually landed on something that we were pretty happy with. After all the pre-production prep work, we are finally able to start our first day of shooting. Is pre-production prep work redundant? Shooting was a blast and an amazing experience. All the cast and crew were rock stars and we plowed through the day with zero mishaps or blunders. The following day we went right back to it for day two at the sawmill. We had a bunch of things we needed to get through and somehow we managed to do it. Every shot we had our crew blast the room with smoke to give us that spooky sci-fi atmosphere. Some floating particles were added in post and a blue grade was added to the footage to give us our look and tone. Moving on, there were a couple different interesting things I wanted to do. To start with, this. I was very motivated to do as many in-camera effects as possible, meaning practically done with limited post-production effects. So in order to achieve this, we had actor put fake blood in his mouth, put the helmet back on, and spit it out of the inside of his helmet. And then you get this. For the alien tentacle, we just spray painted a foam noodle of fleshy gray and then wrapped it around the actor. Next, we took a bunch of KY jelly lube and rubbed it all over the noodle so it could reflect shiny against the light. Then we pulled it off his arm and reversed the footage. That way, it creates the effect of it wrapping around his arm on its own. Now, the menacing alien monster at the end. From the get-go, I knew it would be a mistake to show too much of it. We got a nasty looking werewolf mask from a local costume rental shop, got it a little wet so it could shine like flesh in the light, and then put it on a C-stand. The eyes are enhanced in post, as well as a slight mouth movement, but everything else was in camera. Because we were short on time towards the end of day two, we never actually got our point of view footage for our characters. So Joe and I took a quick trip back to the sawmill one last time, just the two of us, and filmed it ourselves. So actually, the POV shots are all Joe and I walking around in the spacesuits. So when you're done making a movie set and you've spent hours making sure it looks great, but you've already got the shot. Day three was an extra special one. For starters, we are wrapped on the sawmill and we're now filming in a studio. The amazingly talented Jerry Buxbaum and Amanda Steen came aboard the project with their amazing movie studio. There, we shot our cockpit scenes and our storm scenes. What are you talking about, Winters? This is a light breeze. The amazing cockpit set I can't actually take any credit for. It was actually built for another local sci-fi project by Max Jordan and Philip Pauling. There are super talented filmmakers who have their own short coming out called Descent. I hit Max and his team up and they are nice enough to lend it out to our production. We U-hauled it over to the studio and we shot the sequence there. <laughs> For the entry spark effects, Jerry was off screen behind the window spraying metallic sparks with an angle grinder apparatus. That combined with some smoke and we had our capsule entry effect. Now onto the stormy alien planet. It's actually quite nice out here. I wanted our characters to be trudging through a harsh layer of thick fog and blowing particles with nothing else in sight but the storm and them. So to make it look like the background went on forever, we shot in front of a black curtain then Jerry filled the room with a smoky haze. We actually had only one side of the black curtain, not a 360 surrounding it. So anytime we wanted to switch shot directions, we'd simply have the actors pivot their stance and face the opposite direction. That way we could get shots from any direction and we could keep the setup the same every time. For the storm, Jerry set up a high powered fan to blow the smoke towards the actors. Then he put a bunch of fake hail material into a wheelbarrow and using a leaf blower, blew it forward. About 85% of the storm effect was in camera. Only a little additional storm particles were added in post. Next, the wire pull. Because Jerry didn't actually have a fan powerful enough to blow a human being backwards in midair, Jerry rigged Jeremy up for a wire pull. It took him a few times, but eventually we got the shot we were looking for. One. 
The last shot we had to get was their spaceship capsule touching down onto the planet. Because we couldn't afford to build an actual spaceship, I digress to an original way of doing things, model work. Joe and I set up a miniature studio in my basement and slowly raised down a Star Wars TIE Fighter ship onto a card table. Hopefully no one noticed. If you did notice, please do not comment. Last shot of the whole film. Overall, this was an amazing filmmaking experience and I couldn't be more thankful to my extremely talented cast and crew. Seriously, these guys are amazing and I couldn't be more thankful for them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of... I don't... I need a closer. Thank you for watching the behind the scenes of Recursion.